All right, here we are, another day on Kurt's Bug. On the last episode, uh, you saw us go ahead and get the old heater channel removed and kind of got things uh, pre-inspected to see what needed to happen. On this episode, we're just going to continue with the install. Unfortunately, after I did some further cleanup, um, things are a lot worse than uh, I had originally intended. This front uh, inner fender is pretty rotten. Uh, also found out it doesn't fit the new heater channel. The shape is a little bit different. So we're going to end up clipping that off. Um, some of the pieces in the back were way, way worse than I expected. So we're going to have to go and uh, do a lot of cleanup in there. With all of the things that I found wrong with this, I don't know if we're actually going to get to install the heater channel today. Uh, there's a lot that needs to be done in preparation for that. We will be putting the heater channel up in place to kind of do some test fitting and make sure things are moving in the right direction. But as far as the actual install goes, um, I think that's going to have to wait for the next episode. We'll see how things go here today, but uh, we've got a lot, a lot of work ahead of us here. So um, let's just take a look at some of the things that we need to fix and then, uh, then we'll get working. So we're going to start up here and just kind of show you what's going on in this front inner fender well area. And on the last episode, we got to looking at things and we saw a whole bunch of more rust on the inside than we expected. And after I went and did everything uh, I needed to do to get things cleaned up here, you can see there's holes that have poked through the metal. There's a big, big rust hole right here. And all in all, the metal, you know, from about this point down is pretty thin. There was a lot of dirt and stuff that was captured inside here, and I'm sure that just held moisture and caused things to rust further. What we'll end up doing here is uh, I'm going to cut all this rotten stuff out, uh, including this, this hole right here, because this, uh, this stripped out when the fender was removed. And we're just going to replace it with, uh, with some new sheet metal. I have a replacement panel here. You can see how, how much surface area this actually covers. Um, so we'll end up just cutting out what we actually need and uh, just shoring things up that way. This is the hinge pillar, the A pillar on the car. And we, I've already removed a section of this outer skin. Uh, it was all rotten down at the bottom. And now uh, I can get a good look at the inner structure here. And I really don't want to replace this, but it, this whole lower corner here is rotten, as well as this bottom edge. Um, I think what we're going to attempt to do here first is I'm just going to replace this bottom portion here and this, this corner. From about here up, everything looks pretty good, still pretty solid, so I think we can actually save what's left here. We'll just have to piece in these portions. And that allows me to maintain some of the original material. Now in the back here, this is where things are a lot worse than I was uh, really hoping they were going to be. This structure here, once I got all the uh, major rust removed and got things cleaned up, uh, I started poking at it and you can see you know, these holes down at the bottom and around here are the holes that I drilled when I was getting the spot welds out. But this stuff all in the center here, this is all because the metal's so, so thin. Here's a good look at uh, what this looks like from the outside. And you can see, uh, again, all of these holes are the ones that I drilled uh, to remove the spot welds. But then you can see all this, this stuff in here. Uh, you can see how thin the metal is right in this little, this little portion. What we're going to end up doing here is I'll end up cutting probably right up along and through here and across and down so this this center portion will get removed and we'll piece in a nice nice new piece and then right here we'll clip this portion out and weld in a, a new piece here so we'll, we'll do that in two two separate parts looking at the outside of the car here um, there's a again a whole bunch of work that I wasn't expecting to have to do uh, you'll see a hole right here that's just a little pinhole that rusted through We'll have to patch that up. There's another one right back here. I'm not too worried about these because looking on the inside, it's really just contained to this area. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll drill these holes out, 
get them uh, up into some clean metal, and then I should be able to just weld these shut. I'll just put my copper welding spoon behind them, and I should be able to just fill those in, and we'll be covered. The real bad spot on this rear quarter panel is actually right where the fender attaches. And I noticed a bunch of what I thought was just dirt at first, but once I got to cleaning, all of this up and through here, just above this mounting point, is all rusted out. It's super thin. I started picking at it and poking at it to see what was going on, and it's just all soft. You can see a big hole right here. You can see all these holes up in there. And as bad as this is, uh, what we're going to end up doing is I'm going to have to cut this section out and, uh, again, just piece in a new, a new chunk of metal. This right here is the stud for mounting the fender. You put a nut on there to hold your fender in place. And when the fender was removed, I ended up breaking that, so we're going have to have to fix that as well. But it all kind of goes along with what's going on in here. There's just a lot of... A lot of dirt uh, had gotten trapped in here, which held the moisture and just continued to, to rust all this out. Well, I think what we're going to do here first is we're going to go ahead and get this front portion cut out. I'm just going to remove this section uh, of all this rotten material, and then that will allow me to put my heater channel in place and start doing some test fitting. Once I've got this out, then we're going to go to the back and we're going to get all of that fixed up. Uh, that's the worst part right now, so I want to kind of get that out of the way. So I'm going to get this cut out. We'll jump to the back. We'll go ahead and get all the rest of the rotten material cut out there. And then uh, hopefully at that point we can start cutting some patches. All right, so you can see we've got everything cleaned up. We've got our weld through primer put on here. And now really, we just gotta start putting things in place here. So I've got all my patches cleaned up. I went ahead and threw some of the weld through primer on the back side of that. And now we just gotta get things put in place. And for these blind holes here, it's, it can be a little difficult to hold things in. So what we're gonna do is I just have a series of these little magnets and I'm just gonna Use a magnet here to hold this in place. Put one there, we'll put one there, and that actually holds it nice and, nice and flush to the surface here. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and throw a couple of, couple of tack welds on here. Probably put one right here, put one right down here, and then we can finish moving things around, get everything nice and level, and then we can, we can weld around it. So we'll, we'll go ahead and just tack all of the patches in place. Once we've got everything holding itself in, then we'll go ahead and uh, weld it up.
All right, so here we are. We've got things all tacked in all the way around uh, the perimeter of all these. And really all we need to do now is just go through and finish all the welding in between. And there it is, all patched up. So we've got this hole and this hole all taken care of. Uh, we've got it roughed in as far as the sanding goes. I still think there's a little bit more that needs to be done, but we're gonna leave it there and we'll finish cleaning this up when we get to the body work. Once I got these holes patched and I got these holes in the back patched up, I went ahead and filled in uh, these rust holes here and threw in this lower stud. So we're basically done back here now. We have one more piece to make, but we'll do that once we start fitting the heater channel because that all has to kind of fit together. So for the time being, I'm going to call this uh, I'm going to call this good. Well, let's get started on this front A pillar, shall we? You can see all this this rot that's going on in here. Uh, there's a big chunk that's missing, and we do want all of that because it does weld to this outer skin. So we're going to go ahead and get this all cut out and. Uh, and graft a new piece in. I bought this patch panel here that's going to replace the outer skin and included with this patch panel is this this inner structure. This was all welded together and I went ahead and just drilled out the spot welds so I could separate this and now I've got a good replacement. So I'm going to go ahead and clip this out. We'll probably clip right along here up to here and then across there. And then I'll cut the same chunk out of here and just get that grafted in. All right, well here's our heater channel. We're gonna go ahead and do some prep work on this now to get that ready to go. A um, Couple things we're gonna do uh, to make this a little bit easier for us. Uh, first off, this strip of metal right here is actually the carpet hold down. And it's not the right shape. Uh, we want the one that's nice and square. Also, when I did the other one, I noticed that it wasn't centered properly and it didn't fit in the door jam. It was off to one side. And so it's just really, it's really going to be in our way. And again, not the right shape for this particular car. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drill out the spot welds. And we'll just remove this. And uh, I'm just going to leave it off until we get the heater channel installed. And we'll install a new one uh, after the fact. Another thing we need to take care of, uh, this is the defroster vent tube. And there's nothing holding that in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, just clean up some of this paint that they have on here 
and I'm going to throw a couple of tack welds on there just to hold that nice and secure. So we don't have to worry about this thing rattling around going down the road. And then the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to go through and tap all the mounting holes um, where it attaches to the body just to make sure all of our bolts run in and out real nicely. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. I'll get this welded up. I'll get this removed. I'll tap the holes. And then uh, next step, throw it up in the car. Well, you know what they say, you get what you pay for. And you can see we've got the, the heater channel in here. Um, what you can't see is the fact that I've already had this in and out three or four times trying to get things to fit correctly. What we've got going on here is I've got the heater channel in, I've got it lined up uh, as best as I can with the, the front of the body and the rear of the body, and uh, I just can't get everything to behave. When I first put it in, what I did is I just bolted it to the floor pan. I uh, just put the bolts in loosely just so I could move things around and had it aligned to the floor pan. Then I uh, went and put the door on here just to make sure everything was going to work there and I couldn't shut the door. The bottom of the door was actually hitting the, the heater channel. So I moved the heater channel over and got the door to shut. But then it was there was no room down here for the rubber seal. So what we ended up doing is uh, I removed some of the bolts from the pan and kind of moved things around and found what I think is going to be a happy medium. But I do have the door gap along the bottom where the rubber seal goes um, correct. So that tells me that the heater channel is lined up left to right where it's supposed to be. I do have it aligned front to back because right back here where it starts to bend, I had to make sure that that lined up correctly. So basically the heater channel is sitting right where it needs to be. Um, but when I pull it back out here, I'm going to show you the, the holes. Um, the two bolt holes for the front are nowhere near lined up. Uh, so what I've done is I've scribed it uh, to match the holes in the pan. Uh, and it's actually not the floor pan itself, but the actual frame head. So those holes are not going to move when we do our floor pan replacement. Everything's fitting real good right now, you know, with a few exceptions here and there. And that's really the only thing that's not working. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and modify that. All right, well, here's an up-close look at the uh, front of the heater channel where the two bolts go through the frame here. And if you take a look right here, you'll see these these little scribe lines, these are where the actual holes in the frame are. So as I had everything mounted where everything was lined up, we went ahead and, and scribed this. And this is where I have to move this plate. And uh, it's going to be some work because this, this little nut plate here is actually held captive in a little cage. You can see there's a couple spot welds here that hold the cage on there. Uh, it looks to me like it's actually attached to this front plate as well. And so we're going to have to peel all of this apart to be able to move that over. So it's going to be quite, uh, quite an undertaking here. But there is a, a minor side benefit. And that is this portion right here uh, where the inner fender well attaches. Looking at it from above here, you can actually see where this actually dips in. So this, this plate is too far this way. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to pull this whole front plate off. That'll allow me to actually straighten this guy out, which will bring it back in line with the inner fender. Once we get the captive nut plate positioned correctly, when I put this front panel back on there, we'll actually be able to shift that over, make sure everything's nice and lined up, and should make for a much cleaner, much better install here. All right, so we've got this front section removed here, and you can kind of see now how this is put together. So this plate wraps around here, and then the little captive piece here that holds in the nut plate uh, is slipped inside there. Now if we slide this together and line up the holes the way they originally had it, you can see this, this big gap here. I've already gone and straightened out this tab and this tab. And now if I just simply move that over into proper alignment with the outside where the fender is going to mount, you can actually see that these holes 
I go and grind this out, you'll see these are going to line up perfect. So we still have some work to do getting everything all straightened out here, get it all cleaned up and ready to go. But you can see just how far off this was actually uh, put together here. So I'm going to go ahead now and just get all this cleaned up, get rid of all these jagged edges from the drilling. We'll finish straightening all this stuff out, make sure everything lines up nice. To be honest, it's a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get all this cleaned up here, and then uh, we'll do some final fitting. And there we have it. So now this is all cleaned up. Uh, things are not complete here. We still got to make sure everything's nice and straight and uh, even things out. And this front flange is kind of messed up still. So I'm going to go ahead and get that all pounded out straight here. But now that we've got things uh, really close, you can see that when I slide this up into place, everything lines up. You can see that the holes that I had to route out here, they line up just about perfect with the holes down below. And uh, now, again, we'll just get everything straightened out for the final time here, and then uh, we'll get it all welded together. Well, okay, I think we are finally at the point now where we can uh, do our final preparation steps to actually get this heater channel uh, set into place for the very last time. We've got all the sheet metal patched up that needed to be patched. We have the heater channel modified and really everything's fitting pretty well. There's still some other uh, minor things that need to be done, but those will be done once the channel's in place so we can fit things exactly the way they need to be. So now, I think what we're going to do for our final step here before putting the channel up and in the car is just to go through all these areas that are going to be welded and uh, finish cleaning those up. I want to make sure that we've got good clean metal to weld to and then we'll throw some, uh, some of the weld through primer on there just to make sure everything is uh, sealed up and ready to go. So I'm just going to get to it then and uh, get all this stuff cleaned up. We'll slap some primer on there and we're really, really close now. Well, I think we're going to have to cut it off for today because uh, I just ran out of primer. I wasn't able to get everything coated that I wanted to get coated, and it's too late in the day here to go get more, so I'm going to have to wait until tomorrow. So I figure now is a good time to just uh, cut this video off. What we'll do here on the next video is uh, we'll actually get this thing welded in permanently. We'll go ahead and get the heater channel put in. We'll uh, finish fitting all these patch panels to get the uh, last little bit of adjustment done. We'll put the door back on and get make sure that that gets fine-tuned and adjusted properly. And uh, 
we're uh, we're almost there. So thanks for hanging out here today, and uh, you know I know this video got got kind of long, but you can see just how involved this process really is. So until the next one, I'll just see you around.